Hello class, welcome to our, to our today's lesson. I'm Mr. Kevin Jaggi from the School of Computing and Informatics. The unit is Networking Essentials. Uh, today's uh, second lesson is on network topologies. The objectives of today's class, by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to understand what is a network topology, what are the various uh, types of topology, how do those topologies work? What are the advantages and disadvantages of each topology? And what are the consideration factors when you're setting up a network and when you're choosing a specific and a suitable network topology? So, what is a network topology? Basically, uh, a topology refers to the way connections are made among all the computers. The way you link up the computers in a network, either by using a wired transmission media or a wireless transmission media, the way the connections are done, where the computers are placed, where they are, how they are linked up together, is referred to as a network topology. And we have uh, two types of network topologies. We have the physical topology and we have the logical topology. You're going to look at each one of these uh, topologies. And when you talk of a physical topology, we are referring to the physical layout of the network, the physical structure of the network. When you look at the network physically, you can be able to tell how computer A and computer B are connected together in a network. That is the physical topology. And the way these computers are connected together determines even how they will communicate in the network. How will the message flow from computer A to computer B within the entire network structure is referred to as the physical topology. So when you're setting up a network, the choice of a particular network topology determines even the way communication will take, up, take place within that network structure. So physical network topologies refers to the physical layout of the network, which now in this case more specifically determines how the connections are done among the computers and how the, where the computers are placed within the network. There are quite a number of uh, physical network topologies that exist that you can choose from when you're setting up a network. We have bus topology, star topology, ring topology, uh, mesh topology, and we also have hybrid topology. Each of these is a topology in its own, and, but the hybrid topology is a combination of more than one uh, of these topologies that you have stated. Each topology has its own strength and weakness. So when you choose a particular topology, it has its own advantages and disadvantages. And one topology may be suitable in a particular network environment uh, over the other. And therefore, it is important to choose uh, wisely uh, a particular network topology. Let us look at each of these uh, network, physical network topologies and see how they are set up and how they work. We'll start with the bus topology. In a bus topology, all the computers are connected through a central cable, which is referred to as the bus cable. This cable is referred to as the bus cable. So as you can see, each computer is connected to that particular cable. And therefore, when a computer wants to transmit data, it uses this central cable that relays that particular data to the destination computer, unless it's from computer one to computer two. The data will get to the bus cable and flow through the bus cable to the destination computer. How does this topology work? How does the bus topology work? 
if a computer has data to transmit, the first step it does is to listen to the bus cable. Listen to the bus cable to find out whether there is any transmission that is going on through the bus cable. Because only one computer can transmit at a time. If there is any transmission, then the, trans, uh, the computer that intends to transmit has to wait until the bus cable is free. Because the moment it listens to the bus cable, it will hear an echo of a signal, meaning that there is data that is traveling through this shared transmission media, which is the bus cable, and therefore it has to wait until the bus cable is free. Once the bus cable is free, that is when it can place the data there, and the data will be relayed to the destination computer based on the destination address. So when you intend to use a bus topology, how it works involves or depends on which computer is transmitting data. And before it transmits data, it has to listen to the bus cable. And if there is any transmission, it has to wait. So at the end of the bus cable, as you've seen from this particular uh, diagram, it is fitted with terminators. These are referred to as terminators. This is a terminator, and these are terminators. And all these computers are linked up through the bus cable. So if there is a computer which is transmitting, any computer that intends to transmit has to wait until that transmission is over and the bus cable is free. Let's assume in this scenario, computer one is transmitting data to computer five. This computer two, three, sorry, two, three, four, five, six. Computer one is transmitting data to computer six. And the bus cable is free. It is not transmitting any data. So this computer will place the data on the bus cable, and this data has the source address and the destination address. So it will move to each computer in turn. It will move to computer 4, it will move to computer 2, it will move to computer 3, to computer 5, and to computer 6. All the computers will get that data. When the data gets to each computer within the bus topology, each computer will compare its address with the address that is encoded in the message it has received. To first of all compare its address and the address that is encoded in the message that it has received. If the address does not match, like in this case you have said the message is meant for computer 6, meaning that the destination address is computer 6 from computer 1. When it gets to computer 2, computer 2, the address does not match, so computer 2 will ignore that message, or it will discard it. When it gets to computer 3, the same, the address does not match, it will discard. Computer 4, the same, computer 5, the same, but when that message gets to computer 6, because the destination address says the data is meant for computer 6, then the addresses they match. So computer 6 will be able to decode that data. It will pick that data and decode that data. And the rest of the computers in the network, they will ignore or they will discard that particular data. Therefore, only one computer can transmit at a time. As you are going to see later, if two computers happen to transmit at the same time, the data that is meant for, to go to computer 6, if computer 1 and computer 3 are transmitting at the same time, computer 1 is sending to computer 6 and computer 3 is sending to computer 4, those data packets will meet along the transmission path and they will collide. So there will be collision of data and the data packets will be destroyed such that the message will not get to the intended recipients. Therefore, the transmitting computers will have to retransmit again. 
and the collision of, of data will affect the transmission. So this, in this particular network setup, only one computer can transmit at a time. At the end of the bus cables, they are fitted with terminators. There's a terminator on this end of the bus cable. There's a terminator on the end of this other bus cable. If the message was destined to computer 20, it, and we don't have computer with address number 20 in this network, if there were no terminator, terminators, the signal will move to and flow across the bus cable. And as we have said, if there is any transmission along the transmission media, another computer cannot transmit. Therefore, it has to wait until the bus cable is free. So if computer 2 had data to transmit to computer 5, it will have to wait. But in this case, the signal that is traveling along the bus cable will never get to the destination because we don't have computer with address number 20, address 20 in this network. So the bus cable is fitted with terminators at the end here such that if the signal echoes to and flow along the unterminated bus cable and it gets to the terminator, the terminators assumes that that data or that signal has already reached the destination. It is idle on the transmission link and they absorb that signal or they terminate that signal by absorbing it, thereby uh, avoiding that aspect of signals moving to and flow without getting to the respective destination if it does not exist in the network. That aspect of the signal moving to and flow along the, the bus cable is referred to as ringing. The echo of the signal is referred to as ringing and it affect the transmission along the, uh, the network cable. And the terminators are meant to absorb that thing so that other computers within the network, they can be able to communicate. As you have seen, if only one computer can transmit at a time within uh, this particular network, it means that this particular uh, network structure is suitable for small networks. If you have more than 10 computers in a network with a setup of a bus topology, then it means that there will be a lot of delay in waiting. There will be a lot of uh, the waiting time will be quite uh, much and therefore it will not be suitable for large networks. So it is suitable for small networks and when you set up this kind of a network structure, it has uh, its own advantages and disadvantages. You have said there is this aspect of uh, ringing if the signal happens to move across an intermediated uh, bus cable, uh, which can be an issue in this particular uh, network. When the signal bounces to and flow along the intermediated bus, it will cause ringing. Therefore, only one computer can transmit at a time in this particular network. When you set up this kind of a network structure, uh, it has quite a number of advantages. One, it is simple to set up because you just require the cable, the cables and the computers and you link them together. It is simple, it is very reliable in uh, very small uh, networks and very uh, easy to use. It is cheap. You don't require to have network administrators to manage this network. It is meant for small networks, 10 and few. So you don't require servers, you don't require network administrators, and therefore setting up this kind of a network uh, it'd be very uh, easy. You require the least amount of cables to set these computers together. Just require the central cable and a cable to failures places where you have the computer. It is uh, flexible because in case you want to add more computers to the network, uh, it is very easy to do so. You just set up the, the computer and add them to the network. If you want to add a computer here uh, to the network, you just link it to the 
central cable and it joins the network and the network keeps on growing. Adding a computer to the network uh, is very easy. Even removing a computer from the network, it does not disturb the rest of the network. So adding or removing computers on this particular uh, network structure uh, does not affect the network and it is easy to do so. This particular uh, network structure has also some disadvantages. When you set up this kind of a network structure, one uh, is about the speed. When you set up this kind of a network structure, heavy network traffic can slow down the bus network. If you have a lot of data uh, that is tra uh, you are transmitting along this particular network, it can easily affect the network and therefore it is, that's why it's also not suitable for a large network. And if the central cable fails, it's going to bring the entire network down. As you can see in this particular network again, whatever data that is coming from a single computer, it has to go to all the computers that are connected in this network as they compare their addresses and determine whether they, they, they match or not. So if there is a problem with the central cable, which is the bus cable, then the entire network will down. A break in the cable, the bus cable, or lack of proper termination of the bus topology will affect the entire network. So when you're setting up this kind of a network, then it is also a factor to consider because in case of a, a, a single issue within the bus cable, it's likely to affect the entire network. So failure of the cable or lack of proper termination can bring the entire network down. Again, it is very difficult to troubleshoot this kind of a network structure. If there is a problem with a single computer within uh, the bus network, you cannot easily tell where that problem is. If there is a problem with the central cable, you cannot easily tell where the specific problem is. Therefore, it becomes very difficult to troubleshoot this kind of a network because there is no central monitoring point of this particular network. This cable may have an issue uh, at this particular point or with this terminator. At that point, the entire network will be down such so that these computers will not be able to communicate. And therefore, you may start checking from this far ahead, uprooting the cable and checking where the cable is, uh, the connection between computers and the cable, only to realize the problem it at, is at this far ahead. Due to the problem of the central monitoring point of this particular network, it is very difficult to fix a problem in case it occurs in a, a bus topology network. Then, uh, the bus, again, the, the bus topology uh, is suitable for uh, small networks. Therefore, when you're setting up this kind of a uh, network structure, then uh, you cannot, it is not suitable for a large network. It is only suitable for uh, small networks due to the fact that only one computer can transmit at a time. And again, due to the challenges in case there is a, a point of a failure within the network, it is likely to affect the entire community of users in this particular network. Then we have the second physical topology, which is a star topology. In a star topology, all the computers are connected through a central device, which is referred to as the hub. A hub is a network device whose function is to bring the media segments together, to centralize the cables together. So they are connected together through the hub, which is a central device, such that a message from a particular computer, let's say computer one to computer two, goes through the hub to the destination computer. The way this network topology functions depends on the type of hub that is connected here. Again, remember we said there are three types of hub. We have the passive hub, the active hub and the intelligent hub. If the hub that is connected here is passive, it will allow the signals to get through the hub and to the respective destination. But if it is active, it will pick the signals, amplify them 
and broadcast to all these computers connected here. If it is an intelligent hub, it will pick the signals, amplify them, then retransmit only through the destination path. Therefore, the way the star topology functions depends on the type of hub that is connected in this particular uh, network structure. And when you're setting up this kind of a network uh, structure, because it is suitable for a large uh, network, then one thing that you need to put into consideration is that central monitoring point or central device, which is the hub. Which hub are you going to use? Because it will determine how the computers are going to communicate with each other within the network. Because uh, the central device, which is the hub, acts as a, a, the link to all the other computers on the network. So that in case a computer has data to transmit, then it has to pass through the hub. And if it is uh, at the active hub, then the entire message is broadcast to all the computers that are connected within the network. But if it is active, it, will, uh, it is intelligent, it will transmit them only through the destination path. When you set up this kind of uh, network structure, there are a number of advantages that uh, you stand to get that over the other kind of a network structure, the bus topology and the others. One, it is easy to modify and add computers to a star network. Remember, a star network, the hub has connection points, the ports. It could be an eight port hub, 16 port hub, 32 ports. Meaning that if it's a 32 ports, you can connect 32 computers, 32 devices. If there are eight, then you can only connect 80 devices. In this case, if we have only six devices and uh, it's a 16 port hub then, in case you have another computer, it just required to come and configure it and connect it to through the available port, and that will not disturb the rest of the network. Adding or removing computers in this kind of a network does not affect the, the, the rest of the network. The rest will continue to function normally without uh, any problem. And in case the capacity of the hub is exceeded, you can connect another hub, it, it link them together, such that you have provision to connect more computers. Or you can remove the existing hub, which is an 8-port hub, and connect a 16-port and give you room to add more computers in case your network has a, a large number of computers that you intend to connect. So it is very easy to add new computers to a star network without disturbing the rest of the network. Again, the center of the star network is a good place uh, to diagnose the network faults. It's a good place to troubleshoot the network. In case there is a problem with the network, the center of the star network, which is uh, the hub, is the best place to find out where the problem is because you realize computer one is communicating with computer two, but computer one is not com communicating with computer three. Therefore, the problem is between the hub and computer three, which is not communicating. And therefore, you come straight and check whether the connection is well done, whether these computers are working properly, and you'll be able to fix that problem within a very short time compared to uh, the bus topology, which does not have a central monitoring point or central controlling point. So it is very easy to, to troubleshoot this particular uh, kind of a network structure because of the central uh, device, which is the hub, that gives you room to monitor uh, the, the way the devices communicate. Then a single computer failure does not affect the entire network. If a computer is not functioning on a star network, the rest of the network devices are going to work properly. Uh, they are going to still continue communicating. And again, several types of computers, uh, cables can be used in this particular network. You can use different types of cables 
uh, to set up this kind of a network, you can mix twisted pair coaxial and fiber optic cable and so on. Even both wired and wireless. Some devices can connect through wired and wireless uh, connection. So failure of one computer does not affect the rest of the computers. You can link the devices within this kind of a network structure using different network transmission medias. This kind of uh, network structure is suitable for a large network. Unlike the bus topology, which is suitable for small networks, this one is suitable for a large network because as you can see, there is uh, a central device that monitors uh, the, the network. There is a, the server, which you can use to share resources on the network. And mostly servers are used in areas where resources are shared heavily within the network. So it is suitable for large networks. You can still interconnect multiple buildings, multiple uh, sections within the organization, and link them together through the star network such that you end up with one large network. So it is suitable for a large network, unlike the bus topology. Then the third physical topology is the ring topology. And as the name indicates, computers are connected from one computer to the other, from the next computer to the other, until forming a circle of a ring. It can be of this nature, where this computer is connected through a ring, or it can be directed from this computer to this, to this, forming something that is circular. This, computer, this kind of a network structure uh, works, or it functions in a way that it uses a token. A token is a data container, and the token goes around the ring whether it has data or not. If a computer has data to transmit, it will pick that token, place the data there, then the token is, will go around the ring until the data gets to the intended destination. So the, all the computers are connected uh, to each other forming a circle uh, of a cable, and it uses a token passing method to move information from the source to the destination. And message flows around the ring in one direction only until it gets to the, to the receiver. Because only, again, in this particular network structure, only one computer can transmit at a time. So let's look at this case study. If computer one has data to send to computer three, so computer one will have to wait until the token gets here free of data because only one token exists in a ring network and it circles around a ring network in one direction. When the token gets to the computer that intends to transmit data free of data, then that computer will place the data into the token and the token will continue its journey and it will move to the next computer. This computer will compare its address with the address that is encoded in the message. If it does not match, it will retransmit the data to the next computer in turn. And the process will continue until that message gets to the computer whose address matches the one encoded in the message. Like in this case, our message was moving from computer 1 to computer 3. So once it gets here, the address of computer 3 matches the one encoded in the message. Therefore, it will pick the message, and the token will continue its journey until it gets back to the transmitting device, the sending device. Just in case this computer has still more data to transmit, it will still use the token. But if it does not have more data to transmit, it will create a new token and release it on the network so that any other computer that has data to transmit can use that token for transmission. And at any given time, only one token exists in a ring network. Therefore, two computers cannot transmit data 
at the same time. When you set up this kind of a network structure, there are a number of advantages that uh, you, you stand to get over the other kind of a network structures. One, all the computers have equal access to the network. Because as you have seen earlier on, it uses a token passing method to pass data from one computer to the other, where a small token uh, goes around the ring to deliver the data from a specific computer to the other. And it moves very fast because in the case study here, a token can circle a ring which is 200 meters in diameter at a speed of 10,000 times per second. That means that the token moves very fast. And within a single network, all the computers within that particular network, the, uh, they are able to access that particular uh, token within a very short time period. So all the computers have equal access to the network. Because of the speed of the token, it's a very efficient kind of uh, a network structure. And again, because of that speed of the token, even with many users, the network performance is uniform. It is even. The network performance is uniform even with many users because the token can be able to circle a ring or move around the ring at very high speed. And again, due to the fact that when the token is going around the ring, when it gets to the intended destination, that token goes back to the transmitting computer. So that way, it's a form of an acknowledgement. It acknowledges that the message has been received correctly. So this kind of a network structure uh, allows error checking and um, in case something happens within the transmission, the transmitting computer is able to get to know because in data communication and networks, there are three aspects that happens during the transmission. Once data is transmitted and it is received correctly, the transmitter gets a form of a positive acknowledgement. Your message has been transmitted or has been received correctly. Your email has been sent, which means that that's a positive acknowledgement. Your message has been sent. But if the message is not received correctly, the transmitter will still get to know. It will get a negative acknowledgement. Message not sent. Message not delivered, which will prompt the source computer or the source device to retransmit again. The three aspects, positive acknowledgement, negative acknowledgement, and retransmission, they are referred to as uh, automatic repeat request, ARQ, automatic repeat request, which enables to know whether the message has been received or it has been not received uh, correctly, such that it will prompt for retransmit, retransmission of data in a transmission media. And therefore, it allows error checking and acknowledgement of the data due to the fact that the message gets back to the transmitting device. It's able to know that. Then, uh, it also has some disadvantages. Uh, in this case, because all the computers are connected through a, uh, as a cable that it goes around in form of a ring, failure of one computer can affect the entire community of the network or the entire users because each computer is active. Active in the sense that it retransmits what it receives to the next computer in the ring network. And therefore, failure of one computer or failure of uh, the central cable is likely to affect, it's likely to affect the entire network. Again, it is difficult to troubleshoot this network because there is no central monitoring point. It is very difficult to know where the problem is within the network because there is no central monitoring point of this particular network. It could be a problem with the, the ring cable, the cable that connects the ring network. It could be a poor connection to a specific computer. And because there is a poor connection, when the 
token gets to that particular computer, it will not be able to retransmit to the rest in the network. That will be a point of failure in this particular uh, network. So a failure with poor connection, a problem with the central cable, it's likely to affect the entire community of users. That's why, again, as much as a very efficient kind of a network structure, it is not uh, suitable for large network or where we have so many users within the network because uh, a, a slight problem is likely to affect the entire community of users. It is difficult to troubleshoot and again adding or removing computers disturbs the network. If you want to add another computer in the, in the ring network, you have to disconnect the ring so that you can add that computer and that way you'll affect the entire uh, community of users within this particular network. And then we have the mesh topology. In a mesh topology, as the name indicates, there's a point-to-point -point connection of computers within this network. Computer one is connected to two, it's connected to three, it's connected to four, it's connected to five. There is a point-to-point -point connection from each computer to all the computers that are connected in this uh, network structure. And that way, if a computer has data to transmit to a specific computer, it uses the path that connects to that computer. So data that is coming to this computer will only flow through this path. It will not go through computer two, then three. No. If this path is not functioning, it's faulty, it means that computer one can communicate to two, but cannot communicate with three. If computer one has data to communicate to computer four, it will only use this path. But it cannot use this path and then to, to this computer. This is a point-to-point -point connection. That's why uh, there is no data traffic in this particular uh, network uh, structure. But before you set up this kind of a network structure, you can be able to determine the number of devices that you require using uh, this formula, n, n minus 1 divided by 2 to get the number of physical devices that are required, sorry, physical connections that are required to set up this kind of a network, where in this case n is the number of computers. Like in this case, we have the number of computers here is 5. So 5 is the number of computers and for a fully connected uh, mesh topology meaning that there is a point-to-point -point connection from one computer to the other. You require n minus 1, which means 5 minus 1, which is uh, 4, divide by, divide by 2 uh, to get yeah, 5 minus 1, which is 4, divide by 2, uh, physical uh, links to, to connect to different devices. And again, you require n minus 1 input output uh, ports to link up to different connection points. In our example here, this is not a fully connected uh, mesh network because as you can see, uh, this computer is connected to this, it's connected to this, this is connected to this, but this is not connected to this computer here. It means that this computer can communicate to all these other computers in the network apart from this computer number five here. For it to be a fully connected mesh network, there must be a link here. That way to be a fully connected net mesh network. But this one is a partially connected uh, mesh network uh, topology. So you can determine the number of uh, cables that you require to set up in this network and the input output ports, the link, n minus 1, in this case n is equals to 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. So you require 1, 2, 3, and 4 input output ports to con communicate with this computer alone. The same case with this one. It requires n minus 1. You require 1, 2, 3, 4. 5 minus 1, which is 4, input such that it will receive through the four channels and it will transmit using the four channels within the network. And for it to be fully connected, 
it has to be connected to all the devices within the network. When you set up this kind of a network structure, there are quite a number of advantages. Uh, one, there is no traffic between computers because of dedicated path between the transmitter and the receiving computer. Again, failure of one computer does not affect the rest of the network. As you have seen, there is a link between one computer to the other. And when that link fails or that computer fails, the others will still continue communicating in the network. And again, privacy and security is guaranteed in this kind of a network because there is a direct communication from the source to the destination. It doesn't have to go through intermediate connections like the bus topology or the, the star topology and the ring topology. So the, in this kind of a network structure, privacy and security are guaranteed. And it makes, it, uh, it makes a fault identification and isolating those issues very easy because if computer A is communicating with B and it's not communicating with C, then you are able to know where to concentrate on to fix that problem. Then uh, it also has some disadvantages. This kind of a network structure has some disadvantage. One, due to the amount of uh, cables that you require, it is quite expensive. If you look at this kind of a network structure, you realize that assume we have computers in different sections of a building. It's in first floor, second floor, it's an office in 10th floor. There will be a cable from one computer to wherever that computer is. It could be another building. So you require a lot of cables running here and there from one computer to the other, especially if the network computers are not within uh, a close range. You require a lot of cables. And again, you require a lot of space to run those cables. So it's quite expensive in terms of cables that are required to set up this kind of a network structure. And you require a lot of uh, space to run those cables. And again, it is difficult to set up this kind of a network structure to configure it to work as a mesh topology. It is quite uh, difficult. Then uh, those are individual topologies. You can also set up a hybrid topology. And a hybrid topology is a combination of more than one topology. We have talked about bus topology, star, ring, and mesh. Those are individual topologies. But you can combine a bus and a star that is regarded as a hybrid topology. More than one topology connected together. Some computers here are connected through a star topology, and others star topology, another star topology, maybe one building, another building, another one. Then you link them together. So you end up with a, a hybrid topology. It could be a star and a ring, a bus and a star, and so on. That one is defined to as a hybrid topology. And the way the hybrid function depends on the kind of topology that you have set up in those uh, network structure. If you have combined a bus and a star, like in our example here, then the, that topology will function as both a bus and a star topology. In this example here, this is an example of a bar, uh, bus star topology, which is a hybrid topology. So as you can see in this particular diagram, there is a hub here that connects computer 1, 2, and 3. And then this hub is connected with this one and with this one. Hub A, B, and C, they are linked up together. And each one is connected with computers. In this single hub here, the computers are connected through a star topology, which are this computer, this computer, this computer. You can also connect others on this other end depending on the number of ports that are within this hub. So this is a star topology. This is another star topology where you can connect these three computers and even others on this other side and end up with an individual star. But those topologies are linked up together uh, from this hub to this and to this through a bus network structure. So this is a hybrid topology of both a star and a bus and it will function as both of the two topologies just like we have described. And in this case, for instance, the message is moving from computer one to computer seven here. 
it will move to the hub. If the hub is an active hub, it will broadcast to all computers, including this hub. And if, again, this is active, it will broadcast to all computers, including uh, this hub. And this will do the same until eventually the message gets to the receiving computer. If it is intelligent, it, it, it will be sent to the hub, and this will send to this hub, to this hub, and direct it to the receiving computer, just like we have said uh, with the star topology, the way it functions. So the functioning of this topology depends on the kind of the individual topologies that are linked in that particular network structure. So that's the bus star topology. Then uh, the second category of topology after the physical topology is logical topologies. Remember you have said there are two types of topologies. Physical topologies, which is the physical layout of the network, and the logical topologies. The logical topologies explains how physical topologies work, how data is transmitted inside the physical topologies. Physical topologies are physical. You can see them. But the logical is the internal working of the physical topologies. And they are classified into two. There are those topologies that you have discussed that share the transmission media. They are referred to as shared media topology. Also referred to as bus logical topology. And there, there, there is those that do not share the transmission media. In this case, uh, the token-based topology where the ring topology is categorized on its own because uh, it uses a token. It is the only topology that uses a token to transmit data across the different communicating devices. So we have all the others that share the transmission media, and then we have the, the ring topology or the ring logical topology that uses the token to transmit uh, data across the network. So how does the shared media topologies work? We'll use the bus topology to explain uh, how these, the shared media topologies work. In shared media topology, all computers, all, all devices, they share the transmission media, just like we have seen with the bus topology. And when they share the transmission media, then only one can transmit at a time. If this computer is transmitting data, then the others have to wait. And if two computers communicate at the same time, those data packets will meet at the center and there will be collision of data. Therefore, all the shared media topologies uses a protocol referred to as carrier sense multiple access with collision detection, CSMA stroke CD. Carrier sends multiple access with collision detection because collision is bound to occur whenever there is a sharing of a transmission media. And when collision occurs, the data packets are destroyed. They are not delivered to their respective destination. And therefore, the transmitting computers have to retransmit them again. Therefore, that protocol helps in detection of the collision such that the computer that was transmitting has to retransmit again. And in this case, after a different time interval. Even in our case, computer one was, is transmitting to computer three. Sorry, computer one is transmitting to computer uh, five. And computer three is transmitting to computer four. Data is moving in both directions, this side and from here this side going to this computer. They'll meet somewhere here and they'll collide. The carrier sends multiple access through collision detection a protocol will detect that collision and then it will inform the transmitting a device. Then the transmitting device will have to retransmit after a different time interval. So computer one can wait for one second, half a second, and then the computer three will wait for a different time interval. If this one takes one second, this can wait for two seconds or a quarter of a second, so long as it is different from the other computer, so that collision does not occur again. 
So that way, uh, correction will not occur the second time after it has been detected. So the shared media topology uses a protocol referred to as the carrier sense multiple access with correction detection to ensure that when corrections occur through any topology that shares the transmission media, it is detected and the solution is resolved within the communication system automatically. Then the other logical topology is the ring logical topology. In this case, we use the, the ring topology to explain that concept. And because it is only in a ring topology where token passing method is used, one computer, two computers will never communicate at the same time because for a computer to transmit data, it has to wait until the time the token gets there free of data. The rest of the time, the token is with the data. So it has to wait until the token is free. So if there is another computer which is waiting to transmit data, it has to wait until the token is free. That way, only one computer can transmit at a time. Therefore, collision will never occur in a ring topology because the transmitting computer totally possesses the token for communication. And therefore, again, in this particular uh, shared media topology, sorry, uh, ring logical topology, it uses a protocol known as carrier sense multiple access stroke correction avoidance, CSMA stroke CA. Correction is avoided in uh, ring logical topology by the fact that the transmitting computer totally possesses the token for communication and two computers will never transmit data at the same time. That way, collision is avoided and collision is avoided and it, it, it's not likely to occur within that uh, network structure. So the two physical, sorry, the, the two logical topologies applies either in shared media topologies and in a token-based topology where in shared media topology we have said we use a protocol known as carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. This one uses a carrier sense a multiple uh, access to collision avoidance. Here collision is avoided by the fact that only to one token exists and here collision is about to occur because they are sharing the transmission media within the network. That's the end of our second lesson today. We we'll stop there and meet in our next lesson where we we'll look at our next topic, the transmission media. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.